beautiful people, welcome back. I hope everyone is having a fantastic day today. And in today's video, we are finally getting to sit down and test out some new makeup. We have everything from um, One Size by Patrick Starr. These are his eye patches. We have Auric by Samantha Ravindahl. We have some ABH. We've got, I think I even have like a little derma blend going on in here, you guys. We have a little bit of everything. And I'm really excited because even though I don't have something for like every single step of the routine, because I've been working with some of these products behind the scenes, I do have a little bit of like extra information for some of them. And then for others, of course, we're still getting that first impression vibe. If all of this sounds good to you, real quick, I just have a couple of things to say, just a little bit of housekeeping, and then we can get into it. Number one, if you have not yet subscribed, please do that before you leave. I put up three new videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right around like 7, 7.30-ish a.m. my time here in good old northern Michigan. And then also, if you haven't done so yet, wow, that was a very loud, that was a cuppy kind of clap. Uh, but if you haven't done so yet, please take a second and go follow me over on Instagram. Everything will be linked down below. But I'm currently trying to hit 10,000 followers over there, and I put up a ton of content. There is everything from makeup, plus size fashion, you know, outfit ideas, stuff like that. And then even if that's not your thing, make sure that you're checking me out over there still in the Insta stories because I'm over there all the time, especially throughout the week. We hang out in the office, we do unboxings, we talk about new launches, we do um, random little walks with the dog, talk about snow. We really just, we talk about all the things, okay, that's going on in the real life. And uh, it's just kind of the behind the scenes, you know, fun time with me that I really get to enjoy hanging out with you guys. So make sure again that you're following me on Instagram. Everything is linked down below. And with that, let's go ahead. Let's scoot the camera in and let's do this. And also let's take off these eye patches because they are in my corneas. It's a really quick couple of things. I just tried to play around with the camera, like zoom it in, zoom it out. And uh, here's what I'm going to tell you. I zoomed it in pitch black, okay? Because apparently in Northern Michigan in the winter, who'd have thunk it? We have no sun. So I had to zoom it back out. I apologize. I'll do my best to fix it, but you guys know it's not perfect. We do the best we can here. But anyways, let's go ahead and move on to these eye patches here. They're pretty much dried up at this point, but I wanted to run through some of the claims. This is my first time using them. I grabbed these, uh, of course, from One Size, which is Patrick Starr's brand, and these are the Secure the Blur Hydrating Under Eye Patches, and it says that these are going to hydrate, blur, and prime your under eyes with our super-sized patches that will deep puff, reduce the appearance of dark circles, and smooth fine lines and improve overall texture. You leave them on dry eyes for 10 to 15 minutes, which, of course, I have done, and then when you remove them, which we are going to do, you gently pat in the leftover serum, and just make sure everything is nice and smooth. Wow, that actually does look really nice. And I love too, while we're on the topic randomly here, um, I, I love the fact that these patches are so much bigger because I've talked about this a thousand times, but y'all know I got this big ass beefy man face, okay? Like I have a big face. And a lot of times with me, when I put on like a standard under eye patch, I feel like it does this weird thing where it like tapers up to the corner and I never am really able to get like my full under eye where I put concealer. So going in with those, I really do like that. Also real quick, never have I noticed um, um, that I had that dry shampoo right in the middle of my forehead right there. <laughs> Super cute, Paige. Uh, but let's go ahead. Let's just move on. Because, by the way, my under eyes look fantastic. I really, first impression on these, fan fantastic. All right, now from there, we're going to move in and prime the rest of the face. Also from one size, this is the Secure the Blur Makeup Magnet Primer. And it says that this is an ultra-blurring, pore-refining primer with niacinamide that mattifies and evens out skin's texture as it grips makeup for a flawless application and enhanced wear. Also, is it really weird for me to say that I love this packaging, like the size of it, the color, the fact that it has this red cap. And I feel like with all of my other makeup, this would really stand out. Like if I set this on my vanity, I would be able to find it again, um, which is saying a lot because my vanity is a hot ass shit show right now. I'm going to go ahead here and take some of this. It is more of like a white silicone type primer. It comes in like a squeezy applicator and I'm not going in with a ton of uh, first application just because I don't really know what you expect or how far it spreads. So I did go back in here and throw a little bit more over the cheek area. Now we're going to look at this up close. I'm just wiping off my mirror because it's disgusting. Um, and Because I, I really want to see how my pores look. Ooh, right through here looks fantastic, you guys. Like right in this region, it's actually very... Um, very, what's the word? Like, like almost like a soft matte texture on the skin. But at the same time, you can definitely still see a little bit of like inner hydration, which is good. The pores do look refined. And I like the way that it feels. It doesn't have like a weird sticky like tackiness to it, but I can feel that there is something there. Like there, there's something that my makeup can stick to and I like that, but I like too that it doesn't have its own texture. Like it's not gonna build up the thickness. All right, now next up, I'm actually gonna go in with concealer first because I picked this up and I really wanna see what it looks like on its own. This is from Dermablend and this is their Cover Care Full Coverage Concealer. It's in the shade 9N. And it says that this is a creamy lightweight formula of that effect 
effectively covers dark circles in your under eyes, discoloration, acne scars, and dark spots, and provides a soft matte finish while hydrating the skin for 24 hours. It stays soft, supple, and breathable on your skin. It's waterproof and transfer resistant. Okay. All right, so first things first, I love the beefiness of this doe foot applicator. That is very satisfying. I'm just gonna take a little bit here hit both sides. It does feel very, very creamy. And then I'm just going to go in with a sponge and start blending it out. <laughs> oh boy, she's a beefy lady. She got some coverage. Okay, ma'am. I am listening. Ooh, and that color is kind of wonderful. All right, not mad. All right, now obviously when you go in and try like multiple products, you have to consider multiple things here that could be going on. But I just want to say, this looks absolutely beautiful. The blend of the product itself is gorgeous. And even the way that it is like sitting up in this whole region right here looks really, really nice. All right, so two things really quick. Number one, um, I'm going to be taking this cloth. I just remembered I brought this in here because I love this white sweatshirt. I got it from H&M. Everything will be linked down below, but this is so adorable, and I know that because it's so white, I'm gonna get something on it, so I'm just gonna put, gonna put a little drop cloth, number one. Also, number two, I just wanna throw this out there. I did not forget, okay, if you're wondering. I didn't forget about the Auric, but I um, wanted to see what this concealer would look like by itself, like as far as the hydration, the blend, and all of that. And before I go in with this, because I have used this several times at this point, because of that, I know what the glow is and what the consistency of it is, and I didn't want this to affect what I was thinking like with the Dermablend concealer, because I'm gonna take this and put it all in this region. I'm just going to pop a little bit here onto the bottom of my sponge. By the way, I'm using this in the shade, I think this one's Morganite. Yeah, I'm using this in the shade Morganite. And I'm going to just grab it here and lightly pop it on just the high points of my face up in these various regions. While I'm doing this, let's go ahead and talk about the actual product itself. It's so, oh my God, it's so beautiful. Um, because again, I have been using this for several days at this point, and I did put up a first impressions over on Instagram, if you follow me there. Um, you did see me apply it um, under foundation, over foundation, and all the good things. Now what I will say, I'm just gonna kind of start off and give some bullet points here as far as like why I like to wear it where I do and stuff. So first off, texture wise, okay, this one from Auric is very much so a creamy, like a, like a thick cream consistency versus the one from Charlotte Tilbury, which I know everyone is comparing this to, the Hollywood Flawless Filter, which this one has more of a thinness to it. It really settles into your skin. And for me, as someone who has like a lot of texture up in this area, I will say straight out, I have actually been preferring the Auric to this one. And it doesn't mean that I don't love this. You guys know I've talked about it a thousand times. I love it. I love the glow, but because this one has that thickness to it, I find that it doesn't settle into my texture and my fine lines nearly as bad, um, which is really, really great because that's something that I have always struggled with when I use this. And part of the reason that I can only use it like with certain foundations and stuff, because it really affects how my makeup looks throughout the day. So the other thing that I want to caution you on with this um, is if you are someone like me, you're combo leaning, oily, oily, anything on that side of the spectrum, be very mindful because while this is very creamy and I love the way that it looks, Looks, like the texture of it on my skin. I love all of that. I do have a really hard time using it anywhere but the high points because it does make my skin so oily because it's so thick and so creamy and it just brings out the more oily side of my of my skin and like you know all the other issues that I have running through the t-zone. So all of that being said my favorite way to use this is exactly how I applied it today just putting it up on to the high points of my face right here a little bit on the forehead and really buffing it and like pressing it into those areas with a sponge really really for me it getting that glow to like kind of sink into my texture that I have up on this cheek right here. It's not that it doesn't look beautiful everywhere else and on occasion, depending on my foundation, if it's matte or whatever, I will pull it down over my cheek region like as a whole. But just as a baseline for application with this, I do prefer it up in this region just because the way that it wears like throughout the day, the way that it pairs with highlights, the way that it does everything is gorgeous. The way that this looks as a liquid highlight, just like lightly tapped in these regions once you have foundation on, it is absolutely stunning because again the texture of this is the perfect thickness to where it like presses into your skin and you can still work with it without like messing with your foundation and your blush and like all the other stuff you've applied. And I say all of this by the way I'm gonna actually move on to while I'm talking about it um I'm gonna move on and do the rest of my face while I'm talking I could do something else um but one of the things that Sam had talked about with this product is that she really wanted it to be like multifaceted right she wanted it to be something that you could use all over your body like you could mix it in with lotion you could mix it in with your foundation foundation. And um, I can totally see the inspiration in this product for that purpose because the way that you 
are able to work with it and put it on foundation, in foundation, which by the way, <laughs> okay, as an oily person, I, I don't recommend putting this in your foundation. I did that and oh honey, <laughs> I was so oily by the end of the day. Um, so I definitely don't know that like that's my jam personally, but if you are looking for that beautiful like all over dewy situation, I think it could actually work really, really well for you. And also, side note, guys, this freaking concealer is stunning. Like, is it weird if I want to just put it all over my face? Is that a weird, is that a weird sentence? I don't know if that's weird or not. But like, my under eyes look gorgeous. I do have a crease, which is pretty normal for me. But like, I just love the way that this looks. Like, I'm thinking maybe we use this and some powders and we just kind of shape it out from here. The coverage is gorgeous. I'm just gonna pop a little bit over my cheeks. Maybe too, what if I used a brush? Like I could even maybe preserve a little bit more coverage. Just gonna put it right in these areas and then I'm gonna push, uh, pr I'm gonna punch it in. I'm gonna punch it in. I'm going to press it in with an IT Cosmetics buffing foundation brush here. Just kind of lightly. Ooh, guys, that's really pretty. Like this concealer is kind of doing it for me. And why is it like my actual skin tone? I love that I tried to pick out a tone that I thought would be light enough for my under eyes. And I ended up picking out one that was like the actual tone of my face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good job, Paige, good job. All right, so at this point here, I'm just going in with my one size setting powder, and I'm gonna set my under eyes and my T-zone with this. As per usual, this is something I've been using pretty consistently, and I'm actually really excited because this is the first time that I'm gonna get to try all of his products together, both the primer, the powder, and those under eye patches. And then also from there, I'm just gonna buzz through a couple more steps. First of all, setting my face with the Fenty Pro Filter Soft Matte Setting Powder. This is in the shade 150. And from there, I'm just bronzing up the face with a little bit of the Charlotte Tilbury Bronzer. This is in the shade Medium. As you can tell, she is very loved. And for blush, I'm just taking a little bit of the Patrick Ta Monochromatic Moment Blush. This is in the shade She's Passionate. And then I'm also taking just a little bit of my number seven Lift and Luminate Powder. And I'm gonna use this while I do the brows just to lightly brighten up under the eyes, just to give me that little bit of added dimension. All right, so next up, you guys, it's time for brows, and I'm gonna be testing out the ABH Brow Freeze. This is their brow styling wax. It's a clear wax, and it has been freaking viral on, well, everywhere, okay? It's been viral on Instagram, viral on TikTok, and everyone is talking about how much they freaking love this. It was actually really hard for me to get my hands on this because it was live, I think, two or three times on Ulta. It sold out every single time. It was sold out on ABH. It was sold out on a bunch of other websites, and I don't even know, where did I get this from? Maybe the ABH website? Maybe, I don't know. I'll have it linked down below wherever I can find it, but it says here that this is an extreme hold styling wax that lifts and holds brows into place for a feathered effect. To maintain optimal product appearance and efficacy, cap must remain tightly closed at all times when not in use, which is fair. Basically, what you do here is you have this clear wax. It's just like a little, looks like kind of like a little silicone dish, and you're going to grab a brush. Now, while I was on the ABH website. I was really curious about their brushes and I'll kind of talk you through the rest of why here in a second because I picked up another brow product from ABH but I was really curious about these because they have three brow products and I've heard that they are absolutely amazing like they're very um, thin and precise and while you're on their website at least for me while I was on there um, if you purchased one of their brow products you actually got the brush for 10 bucks which I thought was pretty good um, again especially because they're so highly rated so I figured for today we would start off here this is brush 12, I have brush 7B, and also brush 14. And I think I'm going to start off with brush 14. It looks like it is the smallest as far as the um, the actual bristles go. So the first thing you're going to do is dip your brush here into the goo. <laughs> I'm sorry, the styling wax. And I'm going to make sure that mine is, you know, relatively coated. And at that point, I believe you're supposed to take the uh, spoolie that you just coated and you're supposed to deposit it onto the inside of this cap right here. That way you have a nice even layer but you don't have too much like built up on your spoolie. From there, I guess you just go in with it. You kind of do some of these, feather it up. Now keep in mind for me, okay, I'm not going into this with super high hopes because I have very stubborn and very sparse brows, but I saw a lot of people talking about it and they said that if you love that new feathered effect to give it a try and I freaking love that effect. Like I love the, the wispy kind of look in the brows. Oh my God, you guys look at, they are like standing straight up. Okay, so you're supposed to do this, right? And you're supposed to get them like up where you want them, like up and you know, kind of flying high. And then if you want to move them, you kind of lightly 
do that. You can also take your brush, I saw, and like press them into place to like make sure that they kind of laminate themselves down. <gasps> you guys, that's, ma do you see my brow hairs up here? This is kind of magical. Like, I, I mean, again, if you can't see it, I'm not surprised. Okay, I've got like four brow hairs, but like that is impressive, ABH. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side with just what's left in the cap because a little bit of this really does go a long way. Like you don't have to grab a ton of product. All right, so first things first here, I wanna just say that normally when it comes to me with brow gels, I do not typically, again, typically reach for one that is a clear brow gel because I find for me, because I do have very, very sparse brows, that I need something with color to really make mine look full and fluffy. And this is the first clear brow gel that I have ever used that actually makes my brows look like more fluffy and more substantial, even while it's just a clear wax, which is very impressive right from the start. So I love that. And now going in to finish up the brows, this is not a new product by any means, but I have not used one of these in such a long time. And I wanted to give it a go. This is the ABH Dip Brow Pomade. And I grabbed this in the shade Soft Brown, which appears to be a little bit darker than I thought. Okay, I thought it was, thought it was gonna be a little bit lighter. Um, but I wanted to give this a go with this product just to see if I could mimic the little hair-like strokes um, that, again, kind of go with this type of a look where everything is more like, you know, up and wispy and fun. So I'm gonna go in here with that same little number 14 brush and just create little hair-like strokes. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do the same thing with this that I did with the wax. I'm just gonna take a little bit here and then put the rest of it in the cap. That way I can have a little bit more control. Ooh, this is very creamy. Also, I'd just like to say, if this goes horribly wrong right here and now, I have not used a dip brow pomade in, my God, what? two years. I mean, e easily two or three years. Okay. It's been a while. Um, so if this goes wrong, okay, not totally not my fault because like, <laughs> it's just wildly out of practice. Um, so I'm just going to take, and I'm going to start just making little hair like strokes, very short and sweet. Okay. So you know what? I don't think that that's too shabby. I definitely need to clean it up a little bit. Okay. You know what? Okay. I'll take it. Breathe, stretch, do the other eye. Also, cheers to the person in the front who's saying, wow, Paige, what riveting, what riveting eyebrow content is this? I know, right? It's crazy. All right, guys, so brows are done, and I'm gonna say I think this is the first time that I've ever used a dip brow gel that it doesn't look or feel overwhelming to me. Like, it doesn't it doesn't have too much structure. It still has a little bit of movement. I really love the way that the brow freeze has, like, a nice amount of, um, like, like, stiffness, but also it makes my brows somehow look like they're fluffy and they have movement. Like, it kind of has, like, an oxymoronic feel to it, and I really, really like that. Again, first impressions being what they are, this is really great. Now, from here, I do want to go ahead and move on and set my entire face. I'm going to use the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better Setting Spray. While we just wait for that to settle, sink, and kind of dry down into the skin, let's go ahead and talk about this big old sexy devil. This is new from, again, ABH. This is their new Iced Out Highlighter. Packaging is freaking stunning. I actually unboxed this over on Instagram, you guys. <gasps> you are not ready for this pan design. Are you kidding me? Like, I don't even want to touch this, okay? I think it is so freaking gorgeous. The look, the feel. Like, does this not look, when you're holding this damn thing, does it not look luxurious? Does this not look like, oh my god? <laughs> like, do you, do you want my firstborn? because hello, it's yours. It just has so much appeal to it. Like even the embossing in the pan, chef's kiss. Now I am gonna go ahead and just bite down and swatch it. Ooh, that's beautiful. Ooh, and it's kind of yellow. Okay, did, did, didn't quite expect that. I thought it would be a little bit more, like a little bit more champagne-y, uh, but I think I can make that work. That's really pretty. So now I'm just gonna take, this is a Sigma uh, F06 powder sweep brush. And I'm just going to get it nice and coated on all sides, tap off the excess here. Oh my God, guys, why do I love that as much as I do? Like, it, look, that looks so gorgeous. And I'm just gonna say it, okay, I was really hesitant about this one because it does have such a yellow, like, undertone or a yellow, like, glittery situation going on in there. But there's something about it that just really blends in with the skin. Oh my God, that's gorgeous. So next up, moving into eyes, I wanna talk about the Auric Smoke Reflex. I did pick up all three shades of these the day that they launched. I've been working with them just like I have been the Glow Lust ever since I received them. And so I do have a pretty good amount of information with these, you know, comparisons, thoughts, opinions, and whatnot. But I just wanted to share, I went on their website and these do retail for $39, which is definitely on the pricier side of things. And I've already had a few of you guys um, DM me and ask like if I know of cheaper alternatives and stuff like that, which I don't 
don't get me wrong, there could be something out there. I just don't know it yet, but I'm sure um, in time the internet will definitely turn up if there is something. But these, like I said, they retail for $39 a piece. And currently on the Auric website, I'm actually shocked because Ego, which I do have them all swatched, Ego is this darker one right here. It's kind of the darker silver one with the silvery sparkle kind of topper to it. It's a super beautiful shade. But out of all three shades that she launched, that one's actually still in stock. The way that these work, and I'm sure most of you have already seen, um, you know, reviews and other try-ons and stuff, but just to give you a brief overview, what you have here is kind of a double-decker situation where you unscrew the black cap portion. There's a little protector in here, which I plan on keeping. I actually always keep these because they help keep your product fresh. But then down in the base here is kind of the moussey, more opaque color that you see on my hand, the darker shade, kind of every other one right there. And then screwing that lid back on, and the top of the lid is where you find, it just lifts up, there's a little mirror here, and this is where you see the sparkly topper, which is like here, here, and all the way over here. Now, I will say for me personally, this little topper right here, I do prefer them as a topper over the base. You can wear them alone just as like a nice little glinty, sparkly moment, but again, I prefer them over top of the bases because they really just add like that extra little hit of intensity, and it's super duper beautiful. For today, I'm gonna go in, I think, with this one right here, which is the shade Defiance, and I really love it. I love that it has this deeper kind of brown base tone, but it has the lighter sparkle. Now, that being said, and by the way, I'm just going to go start applying this just on my lid here with my fingers. I love, personally, I love applying these with my fingers. It's super easy. It blends like a dream, and it only takes a couple of seconds, so you'll, you guys can see it in action while I talk. Now, for me, what I'm going to say with these first off is that if you are looking at them and you're like, oh, you know, which brown shade do I choose, da-da-da, and you're kind of going back and forth for when she restocks them, I will say I don't think that you need to have both. I don't think that they... Um, are necessarily like the same tone or anything, but I also don't think that they're different enough to justify spending, um, you know, $40 a hit. Like to spend $80 to have two that are very similar for tone, for texture, and just for like the overall look, I don't think that that's something you need to do, at least not in my opinion. As far as the application, I mean, you guys can see these do go on very, very easy. They blend like a dream. You can use your fingers or a brush. And what I like about them is that they kind of have the base part, at least here, it kind of has more of a cream to powder texture. So while I'm taking it and just kind of lightly fluffing it, sorry, let me, let me blend out that little, that little creasy eyeball there. Um, while you're taking it and kind of lightly buffing it all over your lid, it's very easy to blend the edges and not have any harshness to it. But at the same time, you have a lot of control with this product. So you can build up the, um, like the depth of color as much as you want. Like if you want just a light wash, you can do that. It's super easy. Or like I'm doing right now, you can go in and you can kind of build up a little bit more and that's fine too. And at no point does it become like thick or chunky or hard to blend or, you know, anything like that. It just works really, really well. And also as somebody, okay, as, as the queen, I'm not even going to say somebody, all right? I'm sitting over here. I am the queen of the oily ass eyelid throne. And as that queen, okay, as that bitch, I'm going to tell you, these do wear very, very well throughout the day. Like they, they have such a nice effortless kind of staying powder. Like, I mean, you guys just saw, I didn't even put down any concealer, like not, not even a real base did I use with these. And they will still wear so nicely throughout the day. The texture is so lightweight and beautiful. So if you're someone like me that was concerned about that, um, I'm happy to report that you don't have to be because they just wear really nicely. And I'm just going to take a little bit of that same one here too and kind of run that along the lower lash line just for a little bit of that extra color down there. So next up here, I'm just going in. I'm throwing some of that glitter that's in the cap on top of the eye, which is super duper gorgeous. You can see it just kind of helps make them like come to life. It gives it that little bit of movement. So I will say, by the way, I'm just gonna throw some of this on the lower lash line. Um, the only thing that I'm not like, Oh, super obsessed with about this. This is my only critique is that this part up here, this uh, part in the cap, um, I get that it's more of a like a glittery shimmery topper that it has to probably be, you know, pressed a little bit harder because of that. But I don't love the fact that with this part of the product that it does feel so hard in pan. Like it actually feels like you've hit hard pan. And it isn't until you go in and like actually start to use them that you can see how beautiful and how glimmery they really are. It's again, just a personal preference with me. I prefer things to have a little bit more of like a creaminess to them and especially coming off of the base which does have such a nice consistency like a beautiful moussey feel to it I just hoped for that same you know not necessarily the same texture obviously but something that had a similar level of creaminess to it um, in the cap but again personal preference also two things number one my eyes if you're new here they leak like crazy so sorry about that they just for some reason it's like an allergy thing and just 
Ooh, they rain from the heavens. While I'm talking, how about I go ahead and I highlight my brow bone and my inner eye. Also, really quick change of pace. I actually had to just switch out my memory card and I don't remember, surprisingly enough, where I left off. So I'm gonna go in here with the Catrice Dewy Glow Setting Spray. And while that settles in, I'm actually going to go ahead and start doing my mascara. And I'm just going to talk to you guys for a second about the um, Samantha Ravendahl launch here because I have a couple things I want to say, but I also need to keep it moving because I talk a lot. So I'm going to go ahead here and apply this. This is just the Maybelline Lash Sensational Mascara. First, before we do that here, we got to get the lashes good and curled. What I wanted to say, and I don't know if this is weird or not, but I feel like with this line, what Sam did, and it, by the way, I don't mean this in any sort of like a rude or disrespectful way. If it's not clear yet, um, I actually really love this brand. I love what she's done here. I really, really like these products. I've been using them a ton lately. Um, and I just want to get that out there just so that way you guys know my intention is, well, my intention with anything I say is never an ill-intended thing. But I feel like what she did here is so genius with these products because it's almost like she took things that she already knew that she loved and she just made them better. Like she, like she took, okay, starting off with the Charlotte Tilbury, that Hollywood Flawless Filter for a Superstar Youth Glow. It's no secret that she loves that stuff, okay? Like like none at all. She's been raving about it forever. And she's always talked about how she loves the glow and she loves this and that, but you know, that she does have texture and she has these other things. And so, you know, it would make sense that she would come out with a product that is similar to it in certain certain ways, but also, you know, different enough that it works better on more textured skin or, you know, skin like what her and I have, which is just a lot of, um, you know, a lot, lot, lot of crevassy situations up in this area. And then going into the eye stuff too, she did a similar thing and she's talked about this before, even back when I did her video, um, if you're new, I do a series on here called Testing YouTuber's Favorite Makeup, and I did one on Samantha Ravendahl, which I'll link up here. Actually, I've done Samantha, Kathleen Lights, I've done Jessica Braun, I have done, um, hello, uh, That Tayla, and I have done Teresa's Dead, which, by the way, I'll just link them all down below. I've done, yeah, five of them at this point. But um, I mentioned this back when I did her video, which she was the first one, Samantha was on this channel, and um, I mentioned it. one of her favorite eye combos is actually the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize, which I keep right here. It's the shade Marie Antoinette. I use it all the time. I can actually show you. Um, when I say I use it all the time, like literally the pot is um, almost gone. Like I've used 75% of this little thing and it's more of a moussey consistency, just like the base to her little, um, her little pot she came out with. And she mentioned that with that, she actually likes to top it with the, hello, where did it go? With the, um, uh, scattered lights from Hourglass. They have these little pots of like a glittery shade that you put on top. I swear to you, by the way, it's right here. I use it all the time. Um, like the two of them together, since I did her video, I have not stopped wearing that. I still wear it. I would say at least once a week because it's just so easy and like such a quick go-to thing. Taking all of that too and really combining it, I feel like she did such a great job because when she launched in her original reveal video, she talked about how um, she wanted to combine, uh, no, not combine. She wanted to make her brand be like modern day luxury luxury where like, you know, cause obviously we've all seen luxury before, right? It's like not inclusive. It's really pricey for like crappy products. It's always super fragranced. And I love that with her brand, it was like the exact opposite of that. Like she did such a beautiful job creating a brand to me that is so inclusive and so beautiful. Even translating that down to like her marketing and her campaigns for all of these things, you know, making sure that everyone is included and like that, that goes for male, female, skin tone, um, ethnicity. Like she just did such a great job really seeking all forms of beauty for this. And I just thought it was such an awesome, um, awesome thing because that is the one thing, like, you know, packaging and presentation and fragrance and all that, obviously it's important in the end, but like the most important thing about a brand is knowing that when you're looking at it, that you're welcomed there. And I loved that with her brand, she was welcoming to everyone and there was no one that was left out. All right, now next up, I got my mascara done and I'm gonna go ahead and just line my lips here with a little bit of the Essence Stay 8 Hour Waterproof Lip Liner. And and this is in the shade because, duh, it's quite literally the only lip liner I've been wearing recently. I love this color so much. And then over top of that, just to complete the ABH collection here, I picked up, oh wow, that's gorgeous. Um, I picked up their diamond lip gloss. This is their honey diamond lip gloss. And I, oh my, like the packaging, the presentation, everything about this is gorgeous. I love the color of this. Just like with the highlight, it has the uh, gold reflect in it. So I'm just gonna take some of that and apply it right over top of the lip liner. I really like that the texture of this is super light. Like it doesn't feel heavy or thick or goopy and you can't even feel the little, um, the little shimmery like gold reflex in there. Cause you guys know I'm super sensitive to texture and it doesn't 
feel thick at all. That is just so pretty. All right, you guys, so the full face is done and complete at this point, and I just wanna say, we're gonna put up the up close so you can see it too, but I just want to say, I am so impressed right now with my complexion because I was super nervous. Like, using that concealer all over the face, that can sometimes be really hit or miss depending on, you know, is it gonna be too hydrating? Is it gonna be too matte? Is it gonna chunk up? Like, there, there's a lot of unknown variables, especially when you introduce, like, a thicker concealer. This one has kind of a thicker texture. When you introduce that to, like, texture that I have on my skin naturally, or acne, stuff like that. It can just be very hit or miss, and I love the way that all of this is working. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead. Let's put up... The, I should have put up the up close first. Who are we kidding? But let's go ahead and put up the up close now. That way you guys can just see how everything is looking. I also want to draw your attention, and I don't know if I said this yet, but to the under eye area, you guys, it is so freaking smooth. Like the area where I had on those eye patches, I can definitely see a difference. And I mean, yes, obviously I haven't used this concealer before, but like the actual texture of my skin right there just looks so nice and plump and hydrated. So the eye patches for me are a huge win. And I also really love that primer, that Secure the Blur stuff in the little pink bottle here. I really, really like that. I think that it made a huge difference. Even like over the cheek, onto the top of the nose and across like that whole band right there. It just looks so nice. Obviously, I did take this too, like over the cheeks into this area. So that could be part of it as well. But so far, just as far as complexion going, like 10 out of 10, I love the way that my skin looks. It looks nice and hydrated. It's not thick. It's not cakey. That concealer is gorgeous. And so, so far, 10 out of 10 for all of that. Also from there, the stuff from Oric, you guys, I've used this so much at this point that obviously this wasn't a first impression, but I just want to say I love these products. I've been using them almost every single day since I got them in the mail since, you know, she launched her brand two or three weeks ago. And I think for me, the ease of use and the way that they just work with my skin or work with my eyes, it's just so freaking nice. And when they come back into stock, because I know these ones, um, there's only like two shades that aren't sold out. But regardless, if you're looking for a certain shade in, in either or, um, they are worth the wait. They are beautiful. So I think at this point, I don't have anything else to say. If, if there is, obviously, I'll leave it either in the description box or a pinned comment. You can always check there. But at this point, I want to stop and hear from you guys. Is there anything that you guys have thoughts on as far as the products? If you pick them up yourself, maybe you've tried them and you also love them, anything like that, please feel free to leave it down in the comments. I love chatting with you guys and getting kind of your thoughts, your feedback on these new launches, especially as I try them. And then also too, don't forget, I'll have anything that I used in this video to the best of my ability, of course, as long as it's in stock. Um, I'll have it all linked down below. If you want to shop it, check it out. That includes the shirt. I'll make sure that all of, you know, every, everything that I can think of that you guys would care about, I'll make sure that that is linked. And then also also, too, don't forget you can subscribe, turn on your post notifications, follow me on Instagram, all of which will be linked down below, especially Instagram. I would really, really personally appreciate that one. You guys, I think that that's everything. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I hope that you all have an amazing day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!